but let us read from another section of In Love at Ease. Speaking of communities, this community is a very international one, the BAPS Swami Narayan Sansta. Its past president and guru, Pramukh Swami Maharaj, is at the epicenter of this book. Given that this is his love, his ease, which we are discussing, and everyday spirituality with him. We are going through various love stories between himself and devotees, to which he had millions. And let us learn from some of the love that he shared in this second chapter, in love. Swami Sri remembered those whom he loved and communicated it frequently. He showed others that love is an active display of effort, not a passive assumption. He therefore worked hard to keep in touch in an effort to nurture that love. Swami Sri initiated several monks in 1973, with many of them originally from Africa and Europe. In 1974, Swami Sri left for an extended spiritual tour abroad for the first time. The young sadhus were instructed to stay in Sarangpur while Swami Sri was away. They loved the idea of spending time in that small, untouched village in Saurashtra under the guidance of the elder monks, but they did not like the idea of being away from Swami Sri. After the morning assembly one day, there was a buzz in the courtyard. Someone shouted, There is a, pardon me, there is a letter from Swami Sri, and it is postmarked from London. Everyone gathered around the young monk to see what their guru had written. One of the sadhus started reading the letter aloud. All is well here. I think of you often amidst the hectic travel schedule and the endless interactions with the loving bhaktas, devotees. I was just having a small piece of pistachio barfi which was offered to the murti of Hari Krishna Maharaj, his Ishta Devata. As I was putting it in my mouth, I thought to myself, what are my loved ones in Sarangpur eating? Just a word to say that I am thinking of you all. Yours, Shastri Nar Narayan Swaruptas, which was his former title. The sadhus had tears in their eyes. Swamishri remembered them in a sea of loving bhaktas and other sadhus while abroad and took the time to articulate it. After returning from his 1988 global spiritual tour spanning more than eight months, Swami Sri traveled in India for an additional three months before finally arriving in Nadiad. He called Sarva Mangaldas Swami and Jan Mangaldas Swami to his room. Both sadhus walked into the room not knowing what to expect. While it was not uncommon for Swami Sri to call them together, given they had traveled as a pair for almost a decade, there was nothing to discuss regarding Swami Sri's travels or the festival celebrations. Swami Sri asked them to close the door behind them. They walked in and sat by Swami Sri's sofa. The Guru moved his upper garment and unveiled a small, manual orange juicer for the two sadhus. They had tears in their eyes. So sweet. Nearly a year ago, before Swami Sri left for his travels to Africa, Europe and North America, the two sadhus had asked Swami Sri for a small favor. They fasted seven days a month and broke their fast with lemon water. The problem was, 
that the Mandir kitchen was locked and they did not readily have access to the keys to make lemon water when they needed. As young sadhus, they decided to go straight to their guru to share their frustrations. A year later, Sarva Mangal Das Swami recalled how foolish it was to ask for something so trivial from his guru, who had just traveled to over a dozen countries to help people with their personal and spiritual problems. Swami Sri had carried that juicer around the world and then for three months in India before delivering it to them personally. Swami Sri asked them to open the box to make sure it was what they needed to make lemon water. He explained its features and then apologized. Sorry it took me so long to get it to you, but I wanted to give it to you in person. You both fast so frequently that I wanted to make sure I provided this small item for you. The two sadhus were overwhelmed by the extent of their guru's deep concern for them. Swami Sri not only remembered those he loved, but he also went to great lengths to express his love to them. You're drinking lemon water right now, shares Ariat. What a coincidence indeed. Swami Sri's love was persistent, and if at the end it still did not produce the results he wanted, he accepted it as the will of God. He tried hard, but never worried about how it all ended. For him, loving was the result, and he never stopped. In 1977, Swami Sri had traveled from New York to Los Angeles by road. It was one of his extensive spiritual tours around the country. He visited bhaktas in isolated towns just to comfort them as they acclimatized to life in America. One afternoon, he was in Philadelphia, getting ready to drive to Washington, D.C. He had been on a phone call for quite a while, and no one could seem to figure out with whom. They could hear him repeatedly apologize and ask for a chance to meet. The call was from a bhakta, a devotee from Washington, D.C., and he was upset. He had gone to India after his guru, Yogiji Maharaj. After his guru had passed away and had not felt appreciated and respected, Swamishri was troubled that one of his guru's disciples felt neglected under his leadership. He wanted to care for everyone. He tried to convince the bhakta to come meet him. However, the bhakta had a list of excuses and used a new one each time Swamishri suggested a solution. His wife had just given birth, so he could not leave her side. Since the birth happened recently, he could not invite Swami Sri to his home. He worked odd hours, so he was unable to meet Swami Sri during or after work. His workplace had a strong security system, so he could not come outside to meet Swami Sri on his break, which happened to be around midnight. Swami Sri resolved that he would go to the man's workplace at midnight and wait for him outside the fenced compound. He would meet him from the other side of the fence. As promised, Swami Sri made it to the manufacturing plant ten minutes prior to midnight. He waited patiently for the bhakta to come outside, but he never showed. Swami Sri sent a volunteer inside to find him. After waiting for an additional 30 minutes outside the plant, Swami Sri met with the disgruntled man, who insulted Swami Sri and ran off in just three minutes. As they were driving back to a bhakta's home, one of the sadhus asked, Was that really worth it? We have an early morning tomorrow. We should have just rested instead. Swami Sri tapped him on the shoulder and said, of course it was worth it. 
he got to see that we made a genuine effort, and I got to express my bhakti, my loving devotion, towards one of my guru's disciples. The rest is in God's hands. So wonderful. We'll pause our reading of In Love at Ease there for now. And I thank you all for listening with me as we read.